Guys, during crossing any water bodies or river or whatever, you must have seen a bridge. The bridge may be placed on a girder like this or maybe the bridge is consist of a truss. So in this video, I will discuss how a bridge, whether it is a concrete girder bridge or a steel truss bridge, carry the load and it transfer the load of your car into the foundation or the fire. Okay. so. Welcome to my channel. If you're a civil engineer, please subscribe this channel to get videos on analysis, design and construction. So let's start. So consider this is the bridge. Okay. These are two support. This is one support and this is another support. Now this is your car. Okay. Now whenever your car is here, that means you are applying a load. Now what happened? If you apply load, obviously the beam or the girder or whatever you call this or the deck deflect like this okay and if you draw the bending moment it looks like this this is positive why because this is the reaction and this is the reaction so everywhere you get a sagging moment like this so whenever there is sagging moment like this that means the beam deflect like this or there is tension at the bottom you can see here that the bottom fiber has been stretched like this and at the topmost fiber of the deck or the girder has been compressed like this okay so for this type of loading and this type of support you can say that the topmost fiber of your structure is under compression and bottommost fiber of your structure is under tension okay now it is clear you have applied load and the girder has been deflected and you have identified the tension fiber and compression fiber so now look more clearly into the cross section of this structure let's say this is a girder okay or the deck slab and you have cut here like this now if you look you can see that the topmost fiber this one or here this one has been compressed like this and the compression has been decreased gradually and here it is zero this is known as your neutral axis you can say this is somehow here like this this is the neutral axis okay and now the nature of the stress has been reversed from compression it has been converted into tension and the tension has been increased gradually and at the bottom most fiber this is maximum you can say here this is the most tensed fiber okay so after application of load within the girder or the deck or the structure whatever you call it the compression and tension fiber has been identified now you can say that in this compression zone this is the compression zone let's say if this is the triangular distribution this is the resultant you can assume it okay at one third depth okay so this is the resultant compressive force within the girder or within the deck and similarly this is the resultant tensile force and what we do we know that the concrete is very bad in tension whenever tension is applied within the concrete it cracks to eliminate those cracking we have to provide reinforcement and also there is a limitation for concrete to carry the compressive load if the compressive load cross the capacity of the concrete this also needs your reinforcement so simply that's why in a concrete girder we provide reinforcement this is the bottom reinforcement which carry the tension this tension and this is the top reinforcement okay this also carries some amount of compressive force so this is how whenever you cross any concrete bridge or concrete deck or concrete girder you transfer your load to the structure like this and those load via stress transfer to the support now what if instead of concrete girder there is a steel truss like this similarly you have applied load and the load has deflected this structure say this is the truss and for that there has been developed a tension force and also a compression force okay let's say this is the resultant tensile force 
and this is the resultant compressive force what you have done in case of concrete girder simply in this resultant tensile place you have provide your reinforcement also in the compression zone you have provided reinforcement at the place of resultant compression force similarly here also you do the same thing just eliminate the concrete the concrete in between this top steel and bottom steel just remove it okay you provide the steel bottom steel and this is the top steel you have provide just like that okay and you have already removed the concrete now this is vacant this is the vacant place okay so you can say that your car is within the beam and just at the top of the bottom river okay clear so a truss is nothing but a beam without the concrete isn't it interesting well in this video you have learned that always for a truss this type of truss the top members are in compression and bottom members are in tension and you have learned why this is so so in next video we'll discuss how to calculate the compressive force or tensile force within this inclined member so if you find this video useful do subscribe and